our broader quantitative risk management signaling process is getting less bullish at the margins, but it is still bullish in absolute terms. And thus, we are still bullish uh, in absolute terms. Uh, so just taking down risk a little bit, uh, but not yet taking down risk broadly or moving to a state where we're you know, really expecting negative market outcomes. And that could be coming in the coming weeks. You know, it could be coming when you run a Bayesian research process it could come at any point in time in the future. You don't have to live in fear of that because you have us here refreshing all these models six days a week. You know, we, we're going to spot this stuff in real time and, and report those critical inflections in real time with enough lead time for you to do something about it and, and, and actually make money and save money in your portfolios. That's what our process has been proving for the past three years. And we're going to continue to uh, double down on it because it's differentiated and it's working and it's likely to continue working because it's born out of all the best things that I've seen across my career, across the global buy side from an institutional macro risk management perspective. So we're really proud of that. Uh, we're going to keep moving here. Uh, so lastly, wrapping up. We use our global liquidity monitor uh, to now cast trends and key macro indicators on their likely influence upon geographic dispersion for those of you who are running global money. Uh, so look at it through the lens of uh, growth, inflation, uh, and policy. Uh, so there's obviously a lot of information on this chart, uh, but we don't, we wouldn't, you don't need to make time to read this whole thing uh, every every week or every day when you see it in the lead off morning note. Uh, but uh, one thing I call out is that you know for those of you running global money, the current constellation of the growth inflation and policy signals from a global standpoint supports still being long global equities and global uh, uh, rates. Uh, if you look at it uh, in terms of where there's other signals, uh, the market the model likes the, the you know so in terms of the deltas uh, in between growth inflation and uh, the key indicators of growth inflation and policy, uh, it's saying it likes Aussie bonds, it likes the Aussie dollar. Um, the, the model is saying it likes Brazilian stocks and Brazilian bonds. And then it says it's like Canadian bonds, Chinese bonds, Eurozone bonds, that's German booms, really, uh, Japanese government bonds, and then UK gilts. So that's obviously a lot of up arrows there. So, you know, from a fundamental standpoint, nothing has really changed that says, you know, you should be taking down a tremendous amount of risk. Now, again, this stuff could change and evolve in the margins. And when it does evolve, we'll signal that in real time. Most people live in fear that, you know, those spotting those critical inflections in real time is too late. But what I live in fear is in is is I what we live in fear and is proven with our process and proven with our results. More importantly, uh, is that is that you know if you think it's too late spotting the inflection in real time, try positioning for the inflection way before it happens. That's called being early and wrong. And to me, that's way worse. And that's what most investors are doing is trying to predict these predictors. Don't predict the predictors. Just have a process that's robust and Bayesian enough to spot the predictors when they change in real time. And that gives you plenty of time to get out. You're not gonna sell the top, you're not gonna buy the bottom of 42 macro research, but you will capture the bulk of the trade. And in my, in, my, in my opinion, that's the best we should be aiming to do as investors, unless you think you're God's gift to earth, a God's gift to, to investing. We obviously don't think that. 